you and your bullies were driven back by farmers with pitchforks. <laughs> My father saved his village at the cost of his own life. You had him shot as you ran away. A hero at a thousand paces. I'm sorry. I don't remember any of it. You don't remember? For you, the day Bison graced your village was the most important day of your life. But for me, it was Tuesday. Welcome to Back to the Frame Rate, part of the Western Media Podcast Network, a weekly podcast discussing movie news, reviews, and recommendations. That was the late, great Raul Julia in one of his less than acclaimed films, Street Fighter, a tie-in to this week's episode, where we'll be reviewing the Super Mario Brothers movie. I am Nathan Schur, and with me as always are Sam Cole and Ellie Escobar. Hello, Hi. it's a pleasure to be here. Hey, hey. Hello, I'm here. Hello. <laughs> guys. All right. Welcome back, everyone Hello. out there in the podcast world, the podcast kingdom. We are here. We, we have a unique episode tonight. We're just going to be reviewing the new Super Mario Brothers movie. We're, we were going to call this a little bit of a, a, a mini-sode, I guess, truncated episode. We're just going to be doing a review, not doing our recommendations or our weekly watching because we are a little crunch for time this week, but that's okay because everyone here just wants to hear our review, I'm sure. And we'll get to back on a regular schedule on the next episode. So we're, we're not going to waste any time. We're going to get right into a review now. Where am I? <laughs> Ooh, fresh meat for the grinder. Pay him no heed. He is cute, but he is. There's got to be a way out of here. There's no escape. The only hope is the sweet relief of death. Whoa! You've got to be kidding me. (laughs) My army! Koopas! Koopas! Whatever those things are! We will destroy the Mushroom Kingdom! Bowser is coming. I'm not afraid. I'll do anything for my brother. We're going to save him. Yes! Fire! <laughs> okay. So that was a clip from the trailer of the Super Mario Brothers movie, which um, I think how Sam, you're usually on top of these numbers. How much did that make this past week? Oh, it was it was incredible, Nathan. Arnold Schwarzenegger here. It made two hundred and four <laughs> million just at the North American box office in five days from Wednesday to Sunday. Two hundred and four million. That's incredible. It's the biggest animated hit opening, uh, the second biggest ever. It Mario made bank. He walked away with the dollars. Da 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 da. <laughs> you must I, have had mushrooms for dinner. I, I applaud you. That is, I think, um, I'm trying to remember what movie it was. It Frozen 2, I think, was holding the record prior to that for biggest opening. Yeah. Animated feature. Biggest animated opening. Uh, anime, I can't speak tonight. But that is incredible. I think that was about 60 million more than they estimated it was going to be domestic. So It was yeah, it was huge. I, I mean, I thought it was going to be big. I was kind of expecting that, but not that big. I, well, when I heard that, I was like, whoa. It's <laughs> one of those movies that yeah. I guess they call it hits every quadrant. Did it surpass John Wick? Oh, my God, yes. It was. Yeah. It did. Yes. John Wick is doing really well, but like John Wick total US is like 150 or 60. And like Mario just went back, but like past that in his go kart, like, John Wick! <laughs> <laughs> We're talking, speak, it's uh, in terms of e- yeah. economically, but not necessarily quality of the film, but we'll get to that. Yeah. Well, let's, let's get to that because, you know, we're not here as we're not uh, affiliated with Box Office Mojo that. Uh, Website that I frequent regularly to see what the numbers are, but let's talk about the the 
the quality of this film because critics kind of were in the middle on this. I think it got a 57% on Rotten Tomatoes, and but audiences are sky high on this. Mm-hmm. So, but what did the three of us think of this film? So, who would like to begin? Sam. Sam. We, okay. we, we like to throw Sam right into the <laughs> right into it. Out of the frying pan and into the fire. <laughs> Meatloaf, Bad Out of Hell 2, 1993. Anyway, uh, so I'll get that right. But, um, we, are, we are not licensed to play uh, copyrighted music. That's uh, right. And that, and so that was not the actual song. I <laughs> I was not on tune, so I not, messed up. But what happens if you say it in Espanol? Oh, that would actually probably cover my tracks even there more. I guess. See? See. <laughs> si. uh, Está un película, no, no me gusta los películas de uh, Michael Bay. No, Michael Bay. Michael Bay. Michael Bay. Me, me gusta. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm flying way off the, yeah. So as to the Super Mario Brothers movie, I would say to get right to the point, I was entertained. Um, I enjoyed it. And I know like you were saying, Nathan's uh, critics were sort of like, in the middle to the negative audiences were positive. I would say I definitely understand where the critics were coming from. I was a bit more positive. I enjoyed it. I was entertained. There was, you know, humor and action and set pieces on the whole to me. It felt like less of a story and more sort of, of like a montage of like Mario's greatest hits, like hitting every single nostalgia level and moment brilliantly so to me, the the film almost felt like a like a well designed map through like Mario events to the end. Enjoyed it, but I could have done with just a bit more story and and um, uh, in a bit more in that level. And like obviously, I enjoyed it, but like you know, for, and for the Super Mario Brothers movie, I'm not expecting Shakespeare. I'm just saying that for me. I, there was. I just wish it went into a little bit more depth. But I, I will end my opening statement by saying that I did love the fact. I did not know that they were going to have the Mario Brothers in New York City, and open with that. And I thought the opening was spectacular. And I liked how the movie was like started with their roots. That's where I am. So I, I'm positive, but I'm in. I'm kind of in the middle too on the movie. Not you know disappointed, what? but un, un, like underwhelmed, but in the middle of the road. Yeah. I think, you know, I should, probably should have asked this maybe in the beginning because I think a key to this movie is the baggage that you bring into this. Because if you are not familiar with this franchise, if played the games and if have that nostalgia factor, I think so much of this movie is not necessarily going to land well with you. And I wonder if the critics that are looking at this have that history. Sam, what is your familiarity with the Mario franchise, the games and TV I mean, shows? Where, where where do you land with all that? Per- personally, my familiarity is really deep. I mean, I played all the Nintendo games. Um, you know, I've, I've played the newer games, uh, Super Mario Odyssey, which came out in 2017, I thought was like, on the, on the Nintendo Switch was the most epic Mario game ever. Like the games are incredible. Um, so I'm pretty well versed in the Mario world. So in the movie, when he would like get the fox suit or he would get the like mushroom, all the cues I remembered so much uh, like childhood joy from playing the game that all the points worked on me. But it, it's like the movie feels kind of like a, a, a sort of a roller coaster ride that plays the greatest hits and takes you through it efficiently. But it's like, it's, it's, it's like good fun, but like machine like filmmaking. I don't know if that, if that's a way to describe it for me personally. Mm. Okay. Ellie, would you like to share with us your thoughts and would you, could you begin with telling us what is your relationship with the, the mushroom kingdom in, in Mario land? Like what, where, where do you come in? I love mushrooms. <laughs> I mean, okay. Um, so I think for me, I remember playing my little brother had the Nintendo and I, was it, was it my little brother or was it, when did Nintendo come out? See, I'm not very good at well, the original like NES 1985, 85. Yeah, 85 right. or so, so was the original yeah. NES. Yeah. yeah. So for me, uh, when I watched the movie, by the way, I don't listen to critics. 
Okay, because I look at movie from the standpoint of uh, uh, me being human yep. and uh, just enjoying the film. And critics are too critical. They they miss stuff, mm. I feel. So they're like, I think they get paid to tell you this suck, it was good, and that's it. There's no like in between for me with critics. So I don't never listen to critics, never. But <laughs> I do have to say with Mario, I went in, I, I, I got it. <laughs> we went to the 10 a.m. Um, oh, wow. Show Ooh. on Saturday. It was a Saturday, 10 a.m. Yeah. Um, and, and that's because we're trying to avoid a big crowd of kids around. Right. But, yeah, there were some kids that were just screaming. Someone was crying. They oh, wanted, yeah. Oh. They, but, um, I hear that. That's I went at like 9.55 <laughs> at night to avoid that. I was like, nope, nighttime. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, but for me, the familiarity comes from playing it when I was younger, like, uh, in my teens, right? So I was in my teens then, and I just uh, enjoyed, uh, you know, trying to get that Mario over the little, you know, over all the obstacles, and and you know, I always lost, so I never could get <laughs> through the levels, and I'm just like so frustrated. Uh, and so I remember the it, it, just sitting there. It brought me back to when I was young and just uh, enjoying a, a game with my little brother and just playing together and i think that's the best part of this movie is if you've played it if you uh, grew up with it yeah it's gonna feel good it's gonna be like oh, oh my yeah god, there's that oh my god there's you know and and, so, and and to that note i must a quick comment i must say i felt joy when they were like all on rainbow road and like <laughs> donkey kong was there on the huge chase that oh was god, like i totally yeah, that was amazing. About yeah, donkey kong. i love that scene and, uh, yeah. when i saw donkey kong i was like oh my God, there's that. I was like a little kid in the cinema. I mean, they probably could have, they probably could have thrown me out of the cinema. But I was like, oh my God, there's Donkey Kong. And my kid was like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so I loved it. I actually enjoyed it. Um, I am with Sam too. That could have been more development to the story. Um, to the you know, but I think. If, regardless of the, whether there was a strong storyline or plot or whatever to to the to the movie, I truly enjoy just uh, the magic of it. You know, I I totally hear the magic mm. and the it's like yeah. it's fun. Like you, it's it like f- to watch this movie and not have any fun at all and not enjoy it at all. You'd have to have like a heart of stone. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, yes. it's, 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 but it's so it's sleek. Like it's, it's just a very well designed, to be honest. I like, even though, even though I was kind of middling on it, the, the executive producer Shigeru Miyamoto and the creator of like um, Super Mario brothers and the legend of Zelda, that guy is is like a hero to me. I sort of think of him as the Steven Spielberg of video games. Mm-hmm. So I am happy for this movie's big win and yeah. connecting with audiences. You know what I mean? And and as sequels are inevitable, I'm sure there'll be more chances to. I, it's uh, but but well, there'll yeah, be more. Yeah. You know there will be more. Because, yeah. and, I, and I bet it's just seriously? a matter of time before there's a Legend of Zelda movie, which is I'm sure they're yeah. queuing up. The announcement. Yeah. Yeah. So and I, I hope that is good. I but, and I won't get into that. But that movie has to be tonally a lot more serious than like Z- Legend yeah. of Zelda can't be like Link like tripping over his horse and like making some <laughs> meta comment. Like he's like, no, oh, I'm on Twitter. <laughs> that would be but, terrible. Sam, do you, you think know? that they kept it like that because it, it was also they needed to keep it at a level for the kids to understand the story? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I like I can understand that. I just um, it's not. It's more. Like with the development, it's not like I needed like incredibly deep, complex characters. But like one thing that I was interested in was Peach, how she was originally not from the Mushroom Kingdom and she was somehow brought there and like, you know, like raised to be the princess. That was Mm. it was it was good. They gave her a backstory. I and I mean, there is a story and it made sense. Um I thought it was fun, but it, I wasn't like with the action, with the animated sequences as you know nostalgic as they were and all the video game moments, which I really liked a lot. It was fun, but it, it didn't bring me up to the like euphoria level that I felt was something like the DreamWorks animated movie, How to Train Your Dragon from mm-hmm. 2010, when like the kid and his dragon are like flying through the sky and he's teaching mm. him how to fly because that there's a whole that was that's on another level 
So I would say for me, Mario good, but I was hoping for it to be like stratosphere good, Mm -hmm. but it was still good. And I love, I mean, Jack Black and his like song. (laughs) And I mean, I was, I enjoyed it. Like, yeah, Ah, she was badass anyway. Oh, I said it. (laughs) Ass. It's like peaches, 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 Me, peaches, peaches, peaches. I love you forever. Me and my uh, five-year-old have been singing that all week. Oh, yeah, it's yes. stuck in my yeah. head. I hear yeah. you. I hear you. Yeah, I, yeah. Where I, I have some comments on the the voice cast. Uh, I'm going to bring that up. Maybe we'll get to spoilers when we uh, when we get to that part. But definitely, the voice cast is something to 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 dig into a little bit more. Why, why don't I get into to my few cents on this? I don't have a, a ton to say. I think I echo almost everything that has been brought up already on this. Um, I think that this movie, my big, I, I guess I'll say my biggest complaint again uh, about movies like this is that, especially for something called the Super Mario Brothers movie, it is that it played it so safe is my biggest complaint. Yes. I thought this movie was very well done. It's gorgeous. I loved the animation style of this. Illumination produced this. They're the same uh, studio that does like the Minions movies and the Secret Life of Pets. They, they yeah. are knocking these movies out of the park. They, they make they, – they know how to do these. But – this movie, I wish had instead of it being the greatest hits of the Mario franchise, and that's what this feels like. It feels like it's Easter egg after Easter egg, and there's <laughs> they're not taking any chances. There's very little story in here that is doing something that I don't expect it to do. It's, yes, it's, it's a rolling yes. out the cast of characters. And a great comparison is there's a there was a movie, and I think you might agree with me, Sam. Um, 2014's The Lego Movie is, I think, a movie that when I heard that was announced, I'm like, what could they possibly do with The Lego Movie? And that movie is so off the wall crazy. And they do, they take, they swing for the fences in that movie with it's so crazy innovative characters. too. It's yeah, it's innovative. A, yeah. And I wanted a movie like a Super Mario Brothers movie to be like that to take big gambles like the fact that they brought mario and luigi to the mushroom kingdom it this movie does exactly what i thought it was going to do and i was scared that it was going to do is just go right down the middle lane of of everything that it could possibly be bringing in the the roll call of all the characters mario in the 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 squirrel suit the cat suit Peaches, Donkey Kong, it's doing everything by the numbers. Yes. The, joke, the jokes are pretty good. There's some great funny moments in this. It's gorgeous. I have so little to complain about. It's, it's doing all the fan service that it needs to do. But that's what this is. This is a fan service movie catering to I don't know, 38 years of, of legacy. And it probably is doing exactly what it – needs to do to go forward. This is what I'm sure the thinking is launching a, a movie franchise. You know, yes. there's going to be many more of these movies and I'm sure that there, this is, there's going to be more adventures that might be more interesting and taking more chances. Cause there are so many characters in this universe. They can, they can do yeah. so many mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. And there's a character that's in the post credit scene that isn't in this movie that, 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 that I think they're going to explore as well. That makes total sense because it's like if they're, they're launching the Empire, so it's like yeah. this first film had to work like perfectly. Yeah, so they but couldn't. Like, and, and one quick yeah. comment: that yeah. uh, one point that you made that was like just right on the money for me. You said where you wish it had it, when it just focused on a bunch of Easter eggs. I just thought about and I thought maybe it would have been better if it had zeroed in and focused on one type of particular Mario story, you know, and done that incredibly well as opposed to pull it. That might have made a great film, but I can see why. It might have made a great film, but it might not have served the widest audience. Yes. That's the thing. And obviously they are going for, you know, 40 and 50 year olds and parents bringing their kids to this. They needed to serve 
they wanted to serve the widest audience possible to make bank, and they've they succeeded. They yeah, did that. I, you my, know what? My God, they succeeded. <laughs> you know, good like- for them. They 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 got the they got their hit, and this will allow them to hopefully expand in all different directions. And that is what I hope does happen because I think this movie, despite some gripes with it. I think they did a very good job. I just kind of yeah. wish that it did it's take fun. some more yeah. chances. You know what I haven't talked about yet? Uh, I did. I saw this movie in 4DX, which if people don't know what that is, that is oh, where wow. <laughs> you don't just see the movie. You experience it in, in uh, like in um, a way that, well, basically my seats moved. I got sprayed with things. The all I got to see it, smell it, and feel it in the theater I was at. And I'm let me tell you something the Mushroom Kingdom does not smell good, (laughs) it was disgusting. What are you serious? Like, what what was some of the scents like? What, (laughs) but are you serious? You can actually smell things? Um, I'm the opening sequence when Bowser is comes shows up and he's like flaming down like the penguin castle is that what it was yeah um, yeah it's everything smell it's supposed to smell like uh charred like wood or it smelled like sulfur everything <laughs> it was i'm sitting next to my my older daughter who uh we kept looking at each other this is the most it was everything smelled this gross like rotten food and sulfur it was i was like and then every time I knew, I could tell when something was going to be sprayed in my face because it was, I could tell when it was going to happen. There's a moment where they, the, our main, we should get into spoilers is what we should do. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll say this one last thing. There's a moment where our, our, our main characters are, let's just say they are ingested by something and I could tell, oh God, it's going to smell bad. And yes, I get just a, Poof. Poof. Right. It's you know, back in the day when you would um go to the um the optometrist and they would like do that little puff in the eye to like check yeah, the, yeah. your eye pressure. I felt like I just, a little puff. Or no, I my letterbox review, uh, it was basically I, I could sum it up basically walking through the the Macy's perfume section where the little people uh cause cause what do you call them the cosmo the cosmetologist people are like here have a smell of this and they're just spraying you with things. like yeah they're, and, they're like and, little and setup it's, like it's, shops it's yeah completely uninvited like spraying <laughs> in my face and I Wait, can't escape it so Nathan I'm a little confused what kind of cinema is this the 40 what 40 40 X or four <laughs> Or DX. Now the seats move too. So like when they're on like the the rainbow Where is the cinema? road or whatever it is. Um, yeah, the seats are. It's like a little roller coaster ride going through this, which is could be fun, but it's it's jarring. It's not. It's enjoyable. it's funny. It sounds like your because your 4DX experience. At least they make an effort to like time it up with the film better oh, it's, because it's a program. I like, like back in, mm-hmm. in in I think it was 2013, I saw the Ron Howard movie Rush, but it was 4DX, and so the the seat, but it was more basic than what yours. Like the seats would shake when the cars were driving, but the Every timing, single- like the timing got off later. Oh, so that's like awful. It, so that's- it was in the middle of a quiet scene where they're like negotiating a contract. <laughs> they're like, we got a race in a month, and the seats like, Brrr, and I'm like, what yeah, the no. flapper jack. Uh, like, I'm you not know. ruining my well, movie. But, no. but what's but what was <laughs> the timing? was on but every single thing like if if like the smallest thing happened like a pen got dropped my seat would have to vibrate like everything <laughs> was affecting the seats so i'm like oh come on like really like the seat had to acknowledge every every piece of friction that happened in the movie like remind me uh, not to make a, i would not watch a movie in no like you know the thing is like it's fun if you go to like universal studios yeah. And you get like the 10 minute, you know, yeah. experience. Cause it's like a ride. Yeah. It's a ride. Yeah. Uh, you know what? No, no. And I have to say, it probably affected my enjoyment of this movie to some degree. I, cause I'm just, I'm laughing the whole time. Like, oh, come on. Like, really? Like, I just <laughs> was so annoyed by the smells because the movie just smelled so bad. You know, I you know so, we should get into so spoilers because yeah. there's other moments in the movie that I want to talk about. 
how the 40X interpreted it, but it would require <laughs> me talking about later parts of the movie. So I think we can probably get to spoilers because we've been going spoilers. for- Spoilers. Let's get to spoilers starting spoiler alert. right spoiler alert. now. All right, so we're in spoilers for the Super Mario Brothers movie, and we can we can talk about any part of it now. So, uh, one of the one of the funny scenes I did like the it, it felt almost like a scene from Shrek when like Luigi was in the cages inside Bowser's flying castles, and they were trapped there, and there was that really like existential, depressed, like floating ghost oh, who was like, yes. "I love it, it's so fun here." That amused me, like that worked on me. I was like, Haha, "This is funny." Like, yeah, and yeah. that's a great example of some really awesome characters that they put into this. There is, um, they, they, the filmmakers did, I thought a fantastic job fleshing out this world. Great character work. You know what? Let's talk about the voice acting for a moment because that character was great. Um, Chris Pratt was Mario in this. And I, I really want to hear what you guys think, but I want to say the first thing. I thought that it was, he was very underwhelming. He did not impress me. I also think that if you're going to spend, I think he got paid $5 million to play Mario in this. Yeah. And he was unrecognizable, wow. number one, as Chris Pratt. And not that I need him to be. I actually don't like it when they have like A-list actors in these animated movies because then I, I, I find myself just realizing, okay, that's Chris Pratt, that's Chris Pratt, that's Chris Pratt. Um, I didn't notice it as so much like in the Lego movie because I thought he actually gave a stellar vocal performance in that movie. But I noticed it in a lot of animated movies where they continually hire name talent and I just get caught up in the fact that I'm hearing this known actor and it takes me out of the experience pretty often. I didn't really notice it in this movie. I know Anya Taylor, Taylor Joy's in this. I, Jack Black, I actually thought was the highlight of all of the, the known cast in this. I thought he was fantastic as Bowser. But Chris yes. Pratt, I thought, did nothing as Mario in this movie. I did not think that it was uh, – and I don't even think he's really front and center in the marketing of this as well. So I don't know what you guys think, but he did I, not do much for me in this. I, I hear what you're saying. Like I didn't think he was – like bad or, or noticeably bad. I just felt that he was kind of um, uh, like serviceable. Fine. Like it, it, I thought, I thought his, his voice, um, he did like the Mario voice, like, you know, better than I originally thought it was going to be, but I thought he was good, but not like sensational. But was just, he necessary? I, and I know that's kind of a weird question, like, if Chris Pratt is not doing Chris Pratt, did he bring his – what talent did he – and this is – I know this is a weird question. What did he bring to the role of Mario that Chris Pratt could uniquely bring to it? <laughs> I don't know. It's an odd bit of casting. I don't, I'm it not is, sure. It, is, it, yeah. was, it was controversial a year ago, but I'm just wondering because I don't feel like there was anything that he did for this role. To be fair, I have to tell you guys, I didn't even know who was behind the voices of all the cartoons. I was just, I, I legit didn't. I So I don't pay attention. It's funny because when I see animated films, I never go in to see them with this thought that I, I forget who's behind it. I don't even want to know who's oh, behind great. it. Yeah. I just want to watch the film and listen to the little cartoons as I imagine them they would talk if they come to life, right? Right, so, you want to get caught up in the story, yeah. Yeah, so I don't ever know whose voice am I, I'm listening to. So I didn't know it was Chris Pratt until like the the credits, right? Um, but I don't, I don't, for some reason, I never do know who's talking behind the, the cartoons. Just I wish don't. I could be that way. I'm... I, I have this problem where like the moment like a voice is even remotely recognizable, I will spend half the movie trying to figure out who is that, who is that, who oh is that. Oh my God. Yeah, I do, I do the same thing. I especially yeah. especially if I movie. especially if I recognize the voice, but I can't place it, like, oh, it will drive me nuts. And then like 
if I'm at the theater, I can't do anything about it. But like, if I'm at home, like I pause the movie and then like, I have to see who it is. Oh my but, God. But, but that, that, uh, uh, Ellie, I applaud you for that. I wish I could be that you way. Miss, you miss the movie. You're crazy. <laughs> you miss it. Everything. Uh, I will say all, like also for me uh, and like just, uh, throwing this in, but like uh, the score, like Brian Tyler's music, the music score for the film, I thought was incredible because I remember the music from so many Mario games from so many different levels over the years and every theme, a lot of them were woven in so cleverly yeah. and so well that I thought the soundtrack in some ways was like the superstar of the movie. But but going to but look, back to actors, I thought I did think that Jack Black was amazing. I didn't know it was a great Bowser. I just I didn't know it was Jack Black. I just knew there was some evil creature that was trying to harm the whole <laughs> mushroom land. And I was like, oh, I, and I don't know who Donkey Kong it was. I, uh, to date, or I don't Seth, know who Seth the Rogen. voices of the and minions he, are. Seth Rogen was, was just wait, what? That's right. Seth, <laughs> I like I liked Seth Rogen. I thought Seth I, Rogen was Seth good. Seth Rogen was just doing himself. <laughs> yeah, he was uh, he was like <laughs> I'm Donkey Kong. <laughs> <laughs> You do that very well, Sam. I, I'm telling you, I had no idea. And I, I've seen so many of these animated films, right? Um, Shrek and, and the Minions. Ask me if I know who's behind any of them. I don't. To date, I don't know who's who's the actor. I just I just go watch the films, that's all. And I enjoy them. <laughs> and then later I'm like, that was, that was, that was when I somebody says, Do you know who was behind the voice of blah blah blah? I'm like, no. <laughs> it was Johnny Depp. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> now that I know that, I'm gonna feed lies to you, Ellie, and tell and like tell you the wrong actors for like. No. I'm like, oh, Al Pacino was incredible as Bowser. He was like, oh, Mario, get and out I, of here. <laughs> and I believe it too. I would believe it too. <laughs> you know, I told my kid because uh, I was sitting next to my kid, and you know how when Mario takes a mushroom. Or yes. yeah, take a mushroom, right? And it changes and gets really gigantic. Uh, it's, it's a, yeah, so, a little bit bigger. And, uh, <laughs> and that was a giant to me. And, and so I was telling my kid, huh, so that's what, is this PG or rated R, this show? PG. Yeah, we're is pretty it? much PG or PG thirteen. Oh, oh, I thought you meant the movie. Yeah, I was uh, not at the no, podcast. No, no. I don't, I don't our know. Podcast, yeah. our podcast. <laughs> well, I was just gonna say, you know, <laughs> oh, so that's what happens when you like taking mushrooms. Right. Oh, well, yeah. It's what's like. I mean, you know, it's the mushroom kingdom. Or you, or you it's get rather, small. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a rather trippy but universe. Listen, listen, I identify. I identify with Mario. Okay. Like he could be my boyfriend because I'm so short. Hmm. <laughs> so like technically we could like hook up, you know. You're kind of cute too. So that would make <laughs> a good that's that's a good plot for the sequel where you're you and it's you and Mario, but you are live action and everything else is animated and you're the one like live action performer in the in that world. Mar <laughs> Mario too. <laughs> well, I think we're almost Done with a review here. I think, I think my final thought is I thought this movie was I, – I had a lot of fun with this. I think my yeah. kids had more fun than me, and that's, <laughs> I think, what this movie is geared toward. Um, I, I, I think what I should mention as well is I you guys talked about your relationship with the Mario franchise. I mean, I grew up also with the NES. I played Super Mario Brothers. I played the stand-up arcade games as well back in the day. I remember being yes. at uh, arcades playing Donkey yeah, Kong me and too. original Mario Brothers. Yeah back in the stand-up arcade games back in the day and but i am not a gamer and i would say that yeah. i fell off the mario bandwagon in most games for a long long time it's only been in the last year and a half where my youngest daughter got a nintendo switch where she is now deeply entrenched in the the Mario universe. She has Mario the Odyssey oh. game, Mario Party, it's Mario all, like has like six of these games. I play them with her all the time now. If it wasn't for that, so much of this would have gone over my head. And I would say that because I've in the last probably 18 months have reacclimated myself 
with these games and all of these characters, my enjoyment of this film was uh, increased exponentially. And I'm really curious if parents or adults out there hadn't, aren't having those experiences with these games of the last five, 10 years or so. I don't no. know. I mean, Mario games have been coming out for 35 years, but if I don't know what they're getting out of this because this movie is, uh, you need to have that knowledge of these characters because they're not giving you anything. I, yeah. Nathan, they're not, they're not. I think I think parents are just going to the movies to accompany their kids yeah. because it's like a it's a chore. I, I don't think if if you have not had an experience with Mario and the game, then you're just gonna be pretty much poor yeah. in the film. Sitting yeah, there, you're driving nuts. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about. I, I know we get into, into spoilers here, but I don't really have that many comments else. To, any more comments on this? So maybe uh, that's really it. Any any last thoughts? I, I I mean, in in terms of the spoilers, I thought the the New York climax was kind climax. of underwhelming. I was like, eh, you know, but it was okay. <laughs> okay, I can say. The dog yeah. in the movie reminded me of my dog. <laughs> I do. I did like the dog. I mean, yeah. the dog was awesome. Being- and he did come back at the end, and I, and I and I and I like that. And the way he looks at Mario, I was like, "I'm gonna get you, man." <laughs> you know, it's 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 interesting. I would say that for me, it just like one more comment would be that um, I I love the Mario games, and I'm I'm kind of a casual gamer. Like I play a, a lot of games now, but just sort of all over the place. But um, I would say. I enjoy this movie. I will be fascinated and interested to see what happens with a potential Legend of Zelda animated film because I love the Zelda franchise more than Mario. And those games are so epic and and so kind of magical and dark and serious that I'd be fascinated what they would try to do tonally. And if they were willing to take a risk, I feel like it should be more tonally in the spirit of like Princess Mononoke or something like that, Ooh. not animation style, yeah. but it just just epic because yeah. Zelda is epic. Mario is epic. Zelda's more epic. Just that's right. just my opinion. One last thought: uh, anybody has anyone watched the 1993 Super Mario Brothers? Mm-mm. Yes, but it, it's so long ago. I I saw like parts of it on I think HBO recently, but yeah. the memory is not clear. But I remember the like that movie is. On its own planet. Well, I wasn't going to mention this because I want to keep this episode short, but I have a DVD copy and I watched it earlier this week. Well, last (laughs) week prior to this because I had never seen it before. And I think I have a a copy that my brother gave me a long time ago and I finally watched it. And wow. You know what? It's not (laughs) as bad as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. And 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 the only thing I'm going to say about it, I'm going to keep this extremely brief. Is that it? It's 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 obviously a hot mess, but it's fascinating because I have a lot of respect for it. It's swinging for the fences. I don't know what Dennis Hopper is doing in that movie. You, <laughs> if you get Dennis Hopper in your movie, you, he's got to be more un, unhinged than he is playing. It's it's. I don't know if, if uh, King Koopa and Bowser are they the same character. Um. Yeah. I think I, 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 I should know that. I, don't, I, I, I assume, I, yeah. I don't, I didn't understand. But if anything, the this live action version of Mario Brothers, I don't know what, if you agree with the statement, it reminded me of like a late 80s, early 90s Paul Verhoeven movie. Interesting. Like Total Recall, Robocop, except for, you know, less violent, but it had that, like, it was like a leftover set from Total Recall. <laughs> yes, yeah. I I it's but the movie but, is but, but it had that kind of sci-fi vibe to it. I don't know what it is, but I was fascinated by it. I didn't like it, but it was doing something insane and I had a lot of respect for it. So I I'd have to go back and see it again cuz I remember it, but it's too I'd have to refresh myself with it, but I do remember it being really like out there and like the the 
Koops, Koopas are like giant lizards and or it's, something. It's, it's just all was practical like nuts. Yeah. yeah. And they're all like in elevators and hallways. And like yeah. you said, to- it's like a, it's an odd, weird Gonzo yeah. movie. It is. Gonzo <laughs> is, is a great word for it. Yeah. Well, anyways, uh, I'll just say that I, I got to see that finally. Because I, you know, I have to. I'm a completist, Sam. You know, I have to see. I, oh, me too. I, I have to own all the Rambo films, even though I don't enjoy all of them all equally, right. you know? so All right. Well, let's wrap this up. And I thank everyone for listening to our shortened, truncated episode uh, reviewing the Super Mario Brothers movie. Um, thank you for tuning in. Back to the Frame Rate is part of the Western Media Podcast Network. Please go to Apple Podcasts or iTunes and leave us a rating and review. Those reviews might seem insignificant, but they do help raise the profile of the show, which can help with the algorithms that give us more exposure, help us get more listeners and people that will find us. That would be amazing. You can follow. <laughs> That's true. Sorry. <laughs> you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Back to the Frame Rate, and on Twitter at Back Frame Rate. You need to get better handle. Need to better handle. <laughs> Apologies to Matt Damon for us running out of time tonight. <laughs> oh and, my goodness! Yeah. And Ellie, uh, yeah. maybe working that TikTok. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You can find past episodes of the show and other podcasts from the Western Media Podcast Network on our website, and I'll drop the link in the show notes. I'm, Until I'm humor crossfire, I'm humor crossfire. I'm getting that. Nathan. The next I'm week, tune in uh, for our next episode. We are going to begin our Steven Spielberg retrospective, and our first movie in that will be 1989's Always. So, until next week. I want you to know it's over.